Okay, like you said, how y'all doing today? My name is Russell Carter. Uh, I own in, uh, independent record label, Unknown Sound Recording Company. A um, little background about myself. I came, I'm originally from Knoxville, Tennessee, moved to Cleveland um, May 4th, 2011. So in a couple of weeks, I'll be here for 10 years. It'll be 10 years I've been in Cleveland. Uh, started the 2012, I started the Recording Arts and Technology program. Um, there was two things I wanted to do with that program. I said I wanted to own my own record label and I wanted to be a studio engineer. One of those things have changed and one of those goals I have accomplished. Um, well, I accomplished actually both of those goals, but becoming a studio engineer, um, I rather freelance and somebody calls me and record. I just did a session. I don't know. There's a guy, Chris Kaluli. He went through the program too. He's got a home studio, took a client over his house Friday and recorded. I like that as opposed to being locked into a studio. Um, volunteered a lot. Everything that I volunteered at, I was last night, uh, there's an independent radio station. I volunteered, used to volunteer there doing a the show on Mondays. And it just so happened is my buddy's show. They wanted me to do the Monday segment, uh, like two hours, volunteer with them. Just so happened last night, Latimer caught me. I was doing two shows. The lady that owns the radio station, she calls me up. I can't make it today. I'll pay you $100. Can you do the shows? That's usually how my life goes. You know, the more you volunteer, people will see that you have the skills when you volunteer. So it's like usually when they're, they need somebody, you're the first person they call. I do live sound. That's what I love now. I love doing live sound. Started out volunteering, doing CASA. We started a group, CASA at uh, Tri-C, doing open mics, and I would run the sound. That landed me into doing sound all over Cleveland, uh, doing sound for Latimer, for like Earth Fest and um, Columbus, Ohio State Fair, landed me into a lot of paid gigs. Um, but I worked at Tri-C as a student assistant for three years. So I know a lot of people there at Tri-C in the RAT program. Um, with that, I said I wanted to start a record label. I started a record label, did my field experience with Latimer. He helped me a lot. I didn't know what I was doing. I knew I wanted a record label. I knew I wanted to to uh, produce and I wanted to produce music and I wanted to sell music and I wanted to get people to hear new music. Didn't know what I was doing, but it was one of my dreams. Finally got started, you know, with the help of Latimer. Um, I remember building my website the first time. I didn't know anything about a website. Latimer gave me a few pointers. And, you know, I, re I always remember him saying, sometimes we just need a little push. And I, I would, that always stuck with me. There's a lot of things people say to me in the rap program that always stuck, stuck with me. And I took that, and that's what I try to do with my artists. I try to tell them, you know, I got um, Ryan Cross, G Trill, 1-800-SOS, he's a house artist. Lil Fowl, that's a rap artist. Um, Cal. Um, well, I have like seven artists now. I got like seven artists that I work with on my label. And we pretty much just, uh, that's what I was telling them like uh, earlier we was talking. There's a thing where I try to push the artist, but I don't want it. It's like independent. I want my label to be independent and I want everybody to have their freedom to feel like they can come to talk to me if the, they want to work harder. The people that work harder get more results. There's people sometimes that inspire other people with their work ethic. Like there's, as I was saying earlier, it's like sometimes there's artists on my label that work every day. They may not put out all their songs at one time, but they have a lot of songs ready for release, ready that's what we did last year too. Like last year was all about catalog building and building catalogs up. So now we got a lot of songs that we can release at any time right now. A lot of my artists do. But sometimes there's artists that make excuses. Like I was telling them, you either have 
people that make excuses or people that make time. And I mean, I'm not in the business to argue with people or to, to teach you. I'm here to like, if you need help or I can show you, that's what I'm here for. But I'm not, if I try to, like I said, it's independent. So it's, it's about you. It's more so about you and what you want to do and where you want to go. And taking that into the label and we would uh, meet up sometimes, you know, and I would talk to certain people. Oh, you know, I got this and I got this going on. So, you know, they'll probably fall back a little bit. Then there's some people that'll keep going, making more music. And the people that see that, because actions do speak, they speak way louder than words. The people that see the people working harder, they always want to, you don't want to be left out. So it's like, man, I got to get back to work because I'm going to be behind and everybody else making music and making money. But, um, Got the record label going around about 2014. Our first release wasn't until 2018. I finally, you know, got artists and people that wanted to work in me, believed in what I had going on, believed in the dream. We first release, it was pretty much just put out a song. That's what it was 1-800-SOS. It was his first song. It was one of his house songs. And then uh, my other artist, Cal, he had an album that he was working on, 10 song album, and it was on the way. But before, right before, I'd say a couple of weeks before we dropped his album, that's one I handed SOS, he was like, man, let's just, I got this house song, no vocals, it's just, you know, house beat, let's drop it, see what happens. That, that was the start of it all. I wish I had somebody, uh, that knew the process a little more than I did, but I'm thankful that I didn't because there's a, a lot that I had to do and I had to learn. Uh, so far as releasing music and getting your music on Spotify, I used DistroKid to release the music. And what I want people to, to probably take from this is I spend probably most of my day on Google and YouTube. <laughs> Google and YouTube. I, I'm, I'm, uh, my thing is, there's a couple of pet peeves that I have. It's like uh, when I'm in public, I, I hate for people to ask me questions with a phone in their hand. It's like, if you have a phone in your hand, your hand, you have so much information in your hand that it, it's unbelievable you can ask google anything and it will usually give you an answer you can go to youtube um it's a little bit off topic but there was a guy i was at a studio one day there was a guy and i was outside standing outside my buddy's studio a guy came by and he said I need some help moving because one of my employees walked off and I was like, man. So he was like, I'll give you $200 if you help me. He was like, do you know how to drive a Bobcat? I was like, give me about five minutes. I went to YouTube, learned about how the safety bar works on a Bobcat, learned how to drive a Bobcat in like two, about five minutes, got in a Bobcat and made $200. So if you don't use Google or YouTube, I mean, you, you need to learn how to use Google and YouTube. Learn how to search, learn how to search. It'll take you farther. And that takes me to putting out our first music. I've got a couple of streams. That wasn't good enough, because you know me, I'm a person, I like results. First couple of streams, probably getting like three, four streams a day. So I was like, how do I get more streams? What do I do to get more streams? Went to Google, Spotify, how to get Spotify streams, how to get on Spotify. Cause that was like where I seen a lot of traction going to Spotify. So uh, this thing called daily playlist, it came, it comes up. You might want to write this link down if anybody uses. Anybody have any music out or doing any music? Okay. I, I do. 
you might want to take this link down. It's dailyplaylist.com, or you can go to my uh, website, unknownsoundrecording.com, and it's got a submissions page, and it'll show you. It'll take you to Daily Playlist. But Daily Playlist, I found this website just uh, researching and Googling. And Daily Playlist has helped me a lot. This is what I use a lot for Spotify. Daily Playlist, you can have 25 uh, submissions a week. Gives you 25 submissions a week. You can submit to different playlists. You can go genre specific. It allows you to go for the genre of the playlist, or you can just submit it to like any playlist you want to. 25 a week. So I was still thinking like, okay, I got like seven artists. Well, this is not on the first at the beginning of it, but this as time goes on, you know, submitting like 25. And then some of them, they was they wouldn't accept like. I think it was maybe like they didn't accept the play the song to the playlist. Some people did accept the song to the playlist. So I, I did a couple of that for like a while. I started reaching out to um I guess um Cleveland.com. Like there's one thing Latimer told us in the class, you can go to like a lot of websites and they uh or like just in in articles and even in print, you can go and find out who's like the music director of, of certain places and they'll usually have an email address. So, you know, email the cleveland.com, email like the scene and places like that. And they would, they'll put you on their Spotify playlist or, you know, write about you. But it's like I couldn't get enough streams doing this. And I was thinking, I guess, I uh, had to, changed my mindset. I guess I was trying to think about Cleveland instead of thinking about it came a point in time was like there's a whole world out there and and Instagram took me to Instagram. Instagram, I took a social media marketing class. Instagram reaches the whole world. So I started like using Instagram to market my music. And I heard her say Instagram story was like the number one marketing tool at this time right now, Instagram story. So I started marketing on Instagram story. You can share your links from Spotify. You can share your Spotify links directly from uh, your playlist, your song links. You can share all of that directly from Instagram. I mean, from Spotify to your Instagram story. So that was cool. And then started learning how to use the hashtags. I started getting a lot of growth with hashtags. That's one thing that happened crazy too, like the hashtags when uh, the presidential debate and all that started happening and all this nonsense politics, they took the hashtags on the stories, they took those away because of threats that might be posed and you couldn't search hashtags and all that on Instagram. So that cut back a lot. There's always something like when you have a plan in music, or really in, in the industry, but when you have a plan, I've learned that too. You have to have a backup plan. Um, Spotify at the beginning, I'm gonna, I'm gonna mention this too. Um, Pornhub, uh, it was probably December, right before the beginning of the year. I guess they got it was something that got caught up with. I guess somebody in the videos might have been part of sexual trafficking or something like that. But Pornhub took down uh, all of their user content, which was over half of the content that was there. Why am I saying that? Because the user content are just people like me and you. So unless you own a production or production company for videos, then they took down all of your content. So that could happen on Spotify. Spotify did it at the beginning of the year too. They had a stream suite. They took down over a million songs. That meaning to say, like, if porn, uh, Pornhub could be like uh, Spotify or Apple Music, because you don't own those places. So if your music is there on Spotify, and if you're not part of, like, the big three, like a record label, and you're just a user using the aggregate, they can take down your music at any time and not even give you an excuse. So why I'm saying that, it's important to have, like, a website, too, to drive traffic to your website. You want to have some type of real estate that you own on the internet. But um, 
uploading these songs, the first couple of songs, it was a learning process. Got the next release out. You know, I wasn't making enough streams that I wanted, that I wanted to be comfortable with. Using this dailyplaylist.com as time went on, I'm getting more artists. I'm using up the 25 the 25 uh, submissions a week, and I wasn't getting the results that I wanted. So I said, I'm not going to be submitting anymore. I said, I'm going to be a curator. I'm going to curate playlists is what I'm going to do. Why am I submitting to playlists? It was what my mindset was. Why am I su submitting to playlists? People should submit to me. So daily playlists, I looked up on there, submitted, had submit playlists to be a curator, submitted a playlist. It told me I needed 100 followers on the playlist to get be eligible for a curator. So it took me around a month or so. You know, I was hard on it every day um spotify sharing spotify links to my instagram story follow this playlist like every day i never let it my spotify story not have a playlist on there like follow this playlist follow this playlist all day it took about a month i got 100 followers once i got that they let me get a spotify playlist curator i had a curator account as a curator is benefits now i have the power to they have gates for people to submit so everybody now everybody that submits to a playlist they have to follow three playlists so i made two more playlists they had to follow three playlists they had to follow two of my artists and they had to save one song just to get submit the song to the playlist not even if i accepted them or not so i started noticing like all the playlists that i was on were multi-genre. It was not one genre-specific playlist. So I said, I'm going to make my playlist. I started out with three playlists. said, I'm going to make my playlist, multi-genre playlist. Anybody can get on it. And I went to a class, and it's like when you're offering something and you want somebody to, to accept what you're offering, there's a thing called whip them. They, they call it whip them. It's called what's in it for me. So I had to put myself in that position of who am I, what is my crowd, what am I trying to give them, and what's in it for them. So I came up with the idea that I wanted to grow my Instagram and I wanted to grow my Spotify using daily playlists. So I use daily playlists. You have to follow three playlists on there. You have to follow two artists two of my artists and you have to save one of the songs and they're all pre it's all preset in in the uh it's all preset when you click on submit it, it automatically happens then when they hit submit i have an option to send them a message to the email that says their song has been accepted but when their song has been accepted i put i type them a message and it says share this song on your story and tag unknown sound Instagram on Instagram and you stay on for 30 days. You stay on the playlist for 30 days. If not, you're removed after the day. I update daily. I update my playlist daily. So I figured that out. Now it grows. Then I seen people, they were like, well, we see you on Instagram, but it was so, I mean, we found your playlist on, uh, started working. People on Spotify, like we found your playlist, but it was hard to find you. We're looking all over to find you on Instagram. Okay, have to come up with a solution. In my description on all of my playlists, I got like 15, to, I think I got 20 playlists now. I got 20 playlists, all of them have at least a thousand followers. One of them has like around almost 4,000 followers. That's how much growth I've done in like a year. But um, in the description on all my playlists, it has my handle, my Instagram handle at unknown sound recording on Instagram. And I got like four hashtags, like, share, follow, stream. And that's the only thing I have on. It's in every one of my playlists. So now people come, I use not only Spotify to get streams, but I use Spotify to direct people to my Instagram. I use Instagram to direct people to my Spotify. And I try to use Instagram story. I use Instagram story to direct people to my Spotify. And I use my Instagram page 
to direct people to my website. So when um, it's like you have to really study this stuff. It, you, the more you do it, the more you'll learn about it. But um, my Spotify, all my artists are growing. I see it now. We're getting more uh, plays, breaking more algorithms. You start getting like uh, Spotify radio. They start giving you a radio station. You start getting uh, like um, New Music Friday. They'll put you every once in a while. You'll peak. You'll have a peak on New Music Friday or daily daily spins. They'll give you a couple of peaks. But then now is I'm learning now about um, running Spotify ads on. Yep, you can Google all of these two and use YouTube to run Spotify ads on Facebook. There's a way that you can do those two that are more successful. I ran a couple of ads, but now I see um, Spotify and. Well, not Spotify, but your website and DistroKid gives you a link, a hyperlink that gives you like Spotify, Apple Music and all those are in the same place to where people can go and follow those links. There's a thing that you can install in that. It's called Facebook Pixel. You might want to uh, write that down and kind of investigate Facebook Pixel. But Facebook Pixel, you can put that on your hyperlink. You can put Facebook Pixel on your website. That's what I'm in the process of doing now putting Facebook pixel on there. So that way, when people click on your website or people click on your hyperlink, it'll tell you exactly where those people are from, their interests. It's pretty much uh, social media marketing. It'll tell you all of their information and it'll retarget those people in your Facebook ads. It pretty much does most of the work for you. But um, yeah, the daily playlist, man, it's it's grown my Spotify, especially my playlist, my playlist on Spotify, one of them, it's independent artists. It's called independent artists. There, that playlist, man, I get so many people in my inbox on Spotify. Like, how can I get on the independent artist playlist? How can I get on the independent artist playlist? And I've done it so long. I've been doing it for so long that I have pre-saved messages in my, uh, pre-saved messages on my Instagram. Because I know, it's like I know which what people are going to. It's going to be two types of people. There's going to be people that's like, oh, my playlist has, uh, my song was on your playlist, but now I see it's removed and I was about to share. I have already have a message for those people, you know, simply resubmit the song next week. There's uh, people that are going to share. They're going to say, thank you. You know, thank you for submitting my song. I mean, accepting my submissions. I accept every song. I used to listen to the songs until I started getting like over a hundred submissions a day, and I can't listen to the songs anymore. So that's why I that's when I came up and I was like, I'm gonna accept songs from everybody. I'm gonna accept every song, and then the people that don't share, they're gonna be the people that get removed. The people that do share on their story, I reshare it on my story, so that way I'm getting my algorithm up on. Uh, Instagram because whenever they share, I reshare their story onto my story because because they tag me. So it, that way I keep up with the artists that are on my uh, Spotify playlist. That's how I keep up with them. And I also create Instagram growth. And it's uh, crazy because there's people sharing on my story and there's people sharing the Spotify playlist. They're growing. It's they see that uh, I guess they see that it, it gets streams now because people are streaming the playlist and it gets streams and people like your playlist are where I'm getting most of my streams from. So it's starting to grow. So there's certain people that I know I've, I've built relationships with them through through the playlist. They know like I've got a new song coming out, man. I get more streams from you. So it's like there's one guy. He just he. Uh, he actually inboxed me last night about. I just put my new song up because he's learned that every 30 days, every month, he has to have new material because he knows 30 days, I keep you on the playlist for 30 days and I take you off. So every 30 days, I think he's from California. He has a band, Hidden God. Every 30 days, he's in my inbox like, here's my new song. Take a listen. Every 30 days, he's like clockwork. 
But it's crazy because I guess there's a couple of people too. They're like this Spotify, this unknown sound recording guy. He's like making playlists on Spotify and they're doing like good numbers. So he shared it on Reddit. I still cannot find the post, but there's a lot of people that come to my inbox. So I say, you never know. Like sometimes you need a push and, and people, you'll put something out in the world. You never know where it's going to go, especially with this internet. There's a guy that shared something on Reddit and I don't even use Reddit, but there's a lot of people. It came to like a lot of people coming to my inbox like, yeah, there was some post on Reddit that said you got like killer playlists. And I was like, where is this post? So I'm on Reddit trying to find it. And I'm, I've been asking people, send me the link to the post because I want to see what this post is. But somebody shared it on Reddit, my account. So I get a lot of traffic from Reddit and I still cannot figure out why. But I don't know. It's a good thing, but I don't know why. And I can't find the post. It's been probably like six months now. I can't find a post, but um, yeah, through your Spotify and your Instagram, once you get it working like that, you get your Spotify and your Instagram working to grow each other. It, it's pretty cool. And back to releasing the first release, um, 1-800-SOS, he was like, he wanted just to release something his reason was he wanted to release that song just to put something out so he could make the next song better. And I understand what he did now. And you have to be like that. You have to release something to make your, because I've now that I've seen him do that and the level that he's on now with his production and his music is, is way probably like, a million times better it's his song his songwriting everything is it's it's crazy and i remember um one of my teachers um uh, hartzell man bill hartzell he, he said with with quality comes quantity i mean with quantity comes quality i don't know if if too many people feel that but if you don't put out quantity of content right now that you're beginning stages I don't see a lot of people reaching quality because there's, I've seen a lot of people, they get stuck in, is this song good enough to where they'll never release a song. And it's crazy because when you get stuck in that, you won't release songs. And I've told a lot of people now, I've seen them like, is this song good enough? And they'll ask me, is this song? I'll tell them that's not up to me. It's not up to me to say if a song is good enough because I've put out songs and I've had people put out songs that people are like, is this song good enough? And then they'll put it out. And that's when I was talking about reach and Spotify and Instagram. It's crazy. I've seen people put out songs. They're like, is this song good enough? They won't think that it's good enough. I'll tell them, put it out. Just put it out. It's for the whole world month or so ago by there'll be somebody I, I put out artists from africa too i got an artist gas guapo he's from south africa and this is how this started about you'll put out a song it'll go to spotify you'll reach the whole world somebody will come into your inbox from africa or germany and they'll be like man i'm like a 18 year old 17 year old producer from africa from china I heard your music, man, and it inspired me. All I have is like uh, a laptop and a USB microphone. So your song is always good enough. It's always going to inspire somebody. Somebody is going to be inspired by what you put out. And that that's like crazy when you learn that, when you see that and that happens to you. It's like a crazy experience all because of putting the music out and letting the world have it. It'll, it'll come back. Um, like I said, I've built a relationship with the guy in South Africa. He's released. We've sent him beats. He'll record his vocals. He'll send it back over here, email it. We'll mix it down. And we've released music with him in South Africa. Um, I never thought that I would release 
of mu music with the artist <laughs> that's not even in the United States. You know, I never thought that would would happen. I never seen that happening. But um, yeah, Spotify is powerful and Instagram. You have to use the Spotify and some type of social media, like social media and content is where the world is going right now. But um, Spotify is only, I would say one fifth of the money when it breaks down to money. Um, Spotify, like I said, I use DistroKid. Use DistroKid to upload the music, go to Spotify, Apple Music, um, Tidal, you know, all the streaming platforms. The reason why I use Spotify, promote Spotify, and advertise Spotify the most because I've made most of my money from Spotify. Second would be uh, Apple Music and iTunes. Uh, third, I believe, is I have my links too for my hyper follow. I have the links in that order of how I've made my money. I think third is iHeartRadio. iHeartRadio will pick up sometimes. Like they, they'll they pick up one of your songs and it'll start streaming heavy. I think iHeartRadio is my third. But Spotify usually pays on the 15th, I mean the 28th. It usually pays on the 28th, around the 28th or the end of the month, every month, through DistroKid. And I figured out that's where I'm getting most of my money. Spotify is generating most of the money, so I usually go there and promote that. But I still felt something was missing. I had to learn about publishing and I did when we did do the first release of the songs only thing that I had solid was uh BMI I chose BMI the reason I chose BMI was because it's free to sign up that way if any of my artists or anybody it's like I don't have the $50 to pay for ASCAP or this you know, BMI is free. You can sign up for it right now, no excuse. So we had BMI. Most of the artists go through BMI. Took a while for that those checks to start kicking in. But that's one thing I wanted to stress to the class too. It's like now it's probably like a little transition about business. Spotify is a small part. There's a lot of business behind putting out a song. Like I said, the first release. I had BMI, um, BMI, I go to BMI, the level that I'm on now with BMI is, or ASCAP, there's people now we're, we're doing uh, collaborations and stuff like that. The level that I'm on now and my artists are on is people will say, let's do a song together. While they're saying that, like I said, you have the power in your phone. You have so much information in your phone. Whenever somebody says, whether we're online or whether we're in person talking, when somebody says, let's do a song together, the first thing I go to is while you're talking, I'm typing in BMI repertoire or ASCAP repertoire, looking up your name or your stage name. If I don't see you there, I'm going to mention that. The next time that I see you, if you're still not there, we're not going to work because you you won't take the initiative to get a free account. Like that's something I shouldn't have to tell you if you want to be an artist. You know, uh, I'd say that there's one chick, Kat Calabrese. She uh, wanted to work with us around the beginning of the year. She was with the band Rule of Young. I figured Rule of Young, you with a band, I figured you would have a BMI or ASCAP. I mentioned that to her. She was like, yeah, she didn't know which one to go to. She said she was researching it now. She asked me what one would we with. I said, most of my artists would be in mine, but I told her to do your own research. Uh, don't take my advice. Do your own research and find out the answer what's best for you. Told her why we chose BMI. The next time I talked to her, we were talking, we were going to the studio. Her name, she was with BMI and had a song registered. 
That's what I like to see. She took the initiative to do that. But that's a problem that I see with people. They have songs on Spotify. They have songs on Apple Music. They have songs on everywhere. There's even people I've been and I've looked at their name, their stage name on BMI. They'll have uh, their name, but they won't have any of their songs registered. You have to register your songs with BMI in order to get paid. They'll have their name. I'll go and like, you got your name there, but you don't have, you got 10 songs and none of these songs are registered. That's money that you're missing. And what they do with BMI and like a lot of places is they have like black box royalties, especially like Harry Fox and other places have black box royalties. And if you don't claim those royalties within like a couple of years, they send them to like Drake and Beyonce and, and all the other bigger artists. So claim your, register your songs. So from BMI, um, I found out about people that had TuneCore. I was looking like on the BMI and ASCAP and I seen people had publishing, like TuneCore publishing or somewhere we were talking about that earlier. And it's like TuneCore publishing administrator and all these publishing administrators. So I'm like, man, what is this? And then they had like song people like Song Trust, you Song Trust. So I Googled Song Trust and they were like, yeah, we can administer publishing. Cost so much an artist, $100 fee for each artist. I'm like, why can't I just do this myself? And what are they doing? So I found out they were going, remember Latimer Tones about Harry Fox Agency. So I went to Harry Fox and I put in an application for Harry Fox and they accepted my application. I had first I had to start a, a publishing company with BMI. I started a publishing company with BMI. Then I went to the Harry Fox agency, started an account, accepted me as a publisher administrator. So now I had to register. Oh, too. <laughs> when you release a song, first before you start releasing music, use a um Excel spreadsheet, uh, Excel spreadsheet with all your information, your uh, US, your uh, UPC, your song title, the length of the song, all the information, all the metadata. Start doing that early because when I got all these accounts with Harry Fox and then all these other accounts, you have to, uh, I would think I was probably about like 30 songs in because it takes a while before Harry Fox approves your account. So I was probably like 30 songs in at this time when they gave me this account. And I'm like, man, I had to register like all these songs with all this information. <laughs> it's like, it took me about like four days like to do this. But um, yeah, Harry Fox, they pay monthly and your song has to be registered and they offer. Uh, so if you don't have a Harry Fox account, get a Harry Fox account. They were paying for Spotify. But I had a Harry Fox account for a while. They go back like two years. I think it was like the mid 2019, almost 2020 when they accepted me for the Harry Fox account. They went all the way back to 2018 and collected my royalties. Um, Harry Fox had just, I just got paid from Spotify streaming mechanical royalties through the MLC. It's T H E M L C dot com. They has took over mechanical royalties for streaming right now. They were with uh, Harry Fox. Well, that was the check that was coming for Harry Fox. But I'm still with Harry Fox because Harry Fox still, they have uh, certain places. You have two different, you have a notice of intent where people, they send for streaming royalties. Then you have like places that have a direct license that you can get streaming royalties from places like TikTok, TikTok, they send a direct streaming royalty. Uh, TikTok, uh, Facebook, those are direct licenses straight with the company. Uh, you also need music reports. So I got Harry Fox. You need a musicreports.com and soundexchange.com. Those all generate royalties too from like Spotify, Apple Music. But the MLC, they just started. I got my first check from them Monday. That was, they started at, at the beginning of the year. I didn't have to do anything because if you already had a Harry Fox account, they already shared your information to the MLC. But if you don't have an MLC account, you might want to get one of those too. 
Um, okay, where am I at? Have a plan. Yeah, have a plan. <laughs> now, I'm going to say that I had a plan. Well, once you uh, know a little bit of these things, I have a plan now. You, you want to have a plan. Even if you don't stick to the plan, you want to have a plan. Write these things down and learn a plan. Because, like I said, now I know how to release a song now. <laughs> I know, like, all of this stuff, like, register with Harry Fox, Music Report, Sound Exchange. I was BMI. I was catching up and doing that, like, as the song releases. Now it's like I'm in a place now. If we're ready to release a song, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, register it with Harry Fox, BMI, all those places. Do those first, and then the song comes out about four weeks later. We're finally into that position. I see like how to release a song now, uh, videos. But it's all about like learning and doing this. Like, like I said, I do Spotify daily i update daily I'm, I'm looking at spotify daily checking stuff on spotify daily sometimes two or three times a day but at least one times a day i'm on spotify and i'm checking like what am i doing the growth of it where am i trying to target the people but in the end in the grand scheme i always want them to go to back to my website i'm trying to now in the process of putting uh, figuring out the way to distribute the music on my website directly where you can buy it directly from the website, not through um, Bandcamp or any of those, you know, just where it's a, or you pay for it on the website, download it straight from the website. I'm figuring out how I want to go about that because that's where it's coming to. Like I said, if uh, Spotify is cool, all these streaming platforms are cool, but you want people, you want to build your own fan base and you want them to go to your website because for the simple fact, like I said, that's not your platform. They can, Spotify can take your music down at any time. They don't have to tell you why. Yeah. yeah. I'll show you how to do it. Okay. Yeah. You on your website. Not right now, but I'll show you at another time how to do that. Okay. Yeah. We will, we'll oh, have go to ahead. Sorry to interrupt, but uh, yeah, I've got, a part, I've got a process for that. Yeah, that's what I, that's what it's all about. <laughs> that's what I'm learning. I'm trying to. I'm always trying to learn something. But yeah, like I said, man, it's uh, I learned all of this stuff. All of this stuff that I know is from YouTube. Like I said, after I get done with this, I'll probably enjoy myself. It's still like early. I try to handle all. My, I try to handle my business early in the day. And I try to like, you know, have a little bit of fun in between personal time around about, you know, after this around probably from like eight to 10 and then from like 10 and later on in the night where everybody's sleeping, I'm on YouTube, I'm on Google learning. Like I said, there's, there's way more Spotify. They're uh, starting to run ads too. They're running audio ads and, Spotify, like when you release your music too, you can release it to uh, Spotify. If you release it up to four weeks early, four weeks in advance, your release date is four weeks out, then you can put uh, Spotify, you can send it to uh, to try to get on the Spotify. I haven't made it to a Spotify playlist yet, a Spotify curate playlist. Those are pretty, those are pretty big. Those will those take you like overnight success. I know a couple of people that have made on there. Um, but where I'm at now, it's, it's pretty good. I'm satisfied with the streams. Like I said, it, it's only a while before somebody notices, especially the way I said my goal this year is to have my independent artist playlist. That's the one that everybody seems to like is independent artists. I'm going to have that and take that to probably one of the biggest playlists, independent playlists on Spotify. It's pretty well known right now, but, um, who who has Spotify? Who who has music on Spotify? If you got music, I'll just put it like this: If you got music on Spotify, uh, unknown sound recording. It's unknown sound recording on uh, Instagram. DM me on Instagram. Send me your link to one of your songs. I put you on all of my playlists for a month. I'll do that. Go check out my website, and you can see my submission process. But if you send me your song. 
through my uh, Instagram. I'll throw your song on there on the playlist for a month. So let you check out how things are going. Check you out. But um, when you when you have your own property, you make your own rules. So if you if you don't want to be in that game, then simply you can choose not to play it. But like I say, that's why I'm saying I, I, you your main goal is to take people back to your website. I'm figuring that out now because like I say, when you have your own property, they can take your music down. Like it's not it's not for me to have an opinion on it because it's their what the fact is. It's a fact that it's their website and they're going to do what they want to do. So either I can play by the rules or I can't. You know, it's it's pretty like cut and dry to me. I found out like a lot of places like that. Either you're going to have to play by the rules. So that's why I'm saying it's like you want to drive people to your website, have them to come to your website so you can make up your own rules that that's where it's coming to right now in the new era that we're going into. Yes. Well, how are you going to be accepting cash on your website payments? You I was, yeah, I got, I got, all, you know, I got all that. Oh, that's another thing too. I got PayPal. I got Venmo. I got a uh, cash app. There's some of those people that come to the, uh, my inbox on Instagram. They're like, man, I've got more streams through your playlist than I've ever got in my entire life through playlists that I've paid for. And yours are organic. I've paid for streams on certain spots. And I've noticed that the streams on yours playlists are organic and i've been getting more streams from your playlist and people are inboxing me what's your cash app because we're going to send you like 50 bucks <laughs> there's people that send you money there are people that will be like well how much can you put me on the top 10 or can you leave me on the playlist for like three months yeah so you i'll do you have what's your venmo so you got to have all of that too like it's not like none of this happens overnight, but there, there. When you get like a playlist going on, man, you start working with Spotify and people's. It's all kind of once you you connect your Spotify. The what I was like, the thing that I was like wishing that would happen, like in a perfect world, I was like, man, if they had like, if there was a way that people could like DM me on Spotify, it's like you could just message me right here on Spotify. It would make this much simpler, but. But you got to find a way to get them from Spotify to some type of social media so they can talk to you. You want them to be able to talk to you and communicate from Spotify. So whatever social, like I said, I use Instagram. Instagram stories are the like most popular promotional tool right now. Instagram stories. I use Instagram. There's people that like, well, you know, I, I usually use Twitter. Like, well, I use Instagram. Sorry if you use Twitter. They'll they'll use that for an excuse, like because like I said, you my the stay on my uh stay on my playlist for 30 days, share it to your Instagram story. And uh there's some people, some like I say, some people you have to make you have to learn how to be stern with people. They're like, Well, I use Twitter, I shared it on Twitter. Like, well, you know, I said use Instagram. You know, it's like that, that has nothing to do with me if that you shared it on Twitter because that, you know, it's not my job. It's not my job. Uh, it's one thing what, what I learned. What did what did they say? A couple of people there is it's not the when I went through the program It's not the, the program's job to change to fit my, to fit me. It's me for me to change to fit the program of recording arts. So that's what I try to get people to learn it's not for them for me to change my rules of the playlist you have to change you have to people that don't know how to change too they don't uh like you got to be able to change especially with this like i said there's so much going on right now you have to be able to change and adapt because um social media today instagram i still stuck i still stick with instagram that's where it is but for me but, you know, Instagram could be popular today. Tomorrow it could be TikTok. And I don't even use TikTok, man, but there are people are saying, I know a couple of my artists, they use it. But TikTok, like I said, TikTok, they have a direct with uh, music reports. They have, it's a direct license. So 
they pay their royalties straight to, you don't have to give a, a notice of intent. They don't send a notice of intent. They send the royalty directly. And it's a pretty high, that's a pretty, like those direct licenses are, are pretty, they're, they're a pretty high rate. There's a little bit more higher. I've noticed there's a little higher. Everybody's like, yeah, TikTok. And I've seen people, I've seen like people in on Facebook uh, complaining about like royalties and streaming. And now like I get it. It's like the reason why people complain and say, well, this Facebook or Spotify shouldn't be doing this in a stream rate. The reason why people complain because they're not making no money. <laughs> flat out they not making no money and they don't have their songs registered because if you had your songs registered where they need to be you will be making a, a few dollars you're not gonna get rich until you hit you know you you can get you can sustain a living you can sustain a living you're not gonna get rich until you make a decision that like this is what i'm gonna do every day it takes you have to do music daily to get rich and it's just more than this streams you got to do shows and performances but you can pay your bills. You can pay your bills with Spotify money. I have a question for you, Russell. Um, it's de dealing with the copyrights. Um, are you are you getting the copyrights? Um, doing submissions to get the copyrights, or are the artists doing it? And yeah. uh, how 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 far in advance of the release date is that happening? Are you waiting for um, the the submission to come back or the the approval from the from the government to come back before you release them, you know the whole process of the copyright. Okay, I was, that's a good good that you brought that up too. It's good that you brought that up because I see a lot of people that uh, like you can take uh, copyrights if you haven't released the music. You can copyright ten songs at once for like the. $35. If you already released the music and it's out published, you can only do one at a time. But copyrights, your music, when it's, when it's released in tangible form, is copyrighted. So right now, we have copyrighted music that's not released but like i say if it was me i'm not giving legal advice or anything like that don't let a copyright hold you back from putting out a music you can copyright the music when it's out like i tell people now um if somebody stole one of my songs right now i would Probably uh, even a copyrighted song. If, if somebody stole a copyrighted song, I've seen this happen too. People, they get into this copyright, this copyright dispute. Like if somebody stole your song right now, if somebody, you had copyrighted content, somebody stole your song right now, could you afford to go to court? Could you afford to pay legal fees? No. <laughs> okay. So yeah. don't let a copyright stop you from putting out music because I've seen people, if somebody wants to steal your song that bad, like a, a bigger, somebody's got more money than you, they're going to kill you in legal fees. Hmm. I've seen it. I've seen it happen. Well, I've, I've heard people talk about it. I haven't seen it. I haven't actually been to court with them, but I've heard people talk about, you know, somebody, they came and took my song. And then when it came time to go to court, I didn't have enough money to, <laughs> for a lawyer. But if it's good music and it's good intentions behind it, good music, I mean, you're going to come out on top in the end. If you believe in yourself, you always will come out on top. But I've seen people who struggle with that so many times. Like, I got to get my song. It's not copyrighted or this. Man, it's, if, it, if it's somebody that's got enough money, and like if I had more money than you and I wanted to just take your song and you didn't have enough lawyers, I can just keep rescheduling the court date till you run out of money. You know, so don't get caught up in the copyright game. I mean, I wouldn't like, oh, you know, copyright. I don't really see people that much. Like, I don't know. 
I'm not that big of a fish where I've, people is like stealing songs yet, I guess. I don't know. I haven't seen it. I've heard about it, but maybe one day I'll be fortunate enough and make some a song so great that somebody wants to steal it. I don't know. <laughs> That's a good attitude. Yeah. So, uh, well, thank you for coming. Let's see if we have any questions before we say Sora Nora. And uh, I do want to uh, let people know, how can someone reach you if uh, they wanted to collaborate or do something with you? So just go through your website. You have a contact info on there? Yeah, contact info. But the quickest way is unknown sound recording on Instagram. If you don't have that, if you don't have Instagram, the quickest way to reach me, like I said, you can go to my website or you can come to Unknown Sound Recording at Yahoo and give me an email. Unknown Sound Recording at Yahoo. Unknown Sound Recording on Instagram. Instagram is where I'm at, though. I'm on Instagram most of the times. That's what I check most Instagram and my email. Okay. Thanks. So um, let me turn it over to the uh, the attendees. Are there any questions for Russell before we uh, kind of call it quits? How did how do you go about because um, you, you you've got the label? How do you go about kind of accepting uh, people onto that? Like and what kind of those uh, agreements look like? Um, oh, so maybe far, just in general. So far as an artist. You're talking about so far as the artist being on the label? Yeah, yeah. Usually it's just through uh, word of mouth. So far it's just been through word of mouth or people that's been close to me. I've been wanting to reach out more. But usually how I do now is um, I do most of my deals now are 50-50. We're in it together. 50-50. I'll be, I'm willing to help you as much as you're willing to help yourself. That's how I, I see it. There's, uh, like I say, there's usually two uh, publishing money will come in and I'll administer the publishing for my artists. And I'll be like, you know, um, let's, I'll match whatever you your publishing comes back or I'll match you 50-50 and we'll promote with that money. That's usually how we'll sustained so it's not like oh man we always have to come and dig into my pockets to do something i try to be like you know you're gonna get these checks like i try to use the money that we get back like uh i showed everybody too on my label you got uh bmi they have bmi has an app you can turn in your shows directly from your bmi app on your phone so I make sure everybody has that. You can get direct deposit from your BMI. So I try to tell them like, okay, I, I try to be uh, the voice of reason. I try to be the, the good angel on the shoulder. Be like, okay, you know, we getting paid from BMI today. You want to put that money into some promotion, you know, try to like sway. Cause you really don't, you, you're not been living with that money. So let's put that back into the pot. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Let's grow that. Or when the publishing comes out, like, okay, you know, put this publishing money into some promotion. That way you don't have to go into your pocket. And it's like $30, you get like, you'll get a $30 check or a $50 check that you don't need. Let's put that, that's a dollar a day for promotion. So it's just, it's just about being smart, you know, and trying to like, but I do 50, 50 deals and it's just, it's whatever the artist wants or however they want to go with their business because usually it's like they like i said you have some people that, that want to work all day you could tell the people that really want to make it like in the business who wants to who wants to be on the next level there's some people you know they just uh want to put out music and Cleveland is as far as they want to go. There's some people that want to go like the whole state of Ohio. And then there's some people you can tell they working hard because they want to be heard all over the world. I mean, you can, everybody wants different things, but I try to work with everybody, man. I want, like I said, I want to get the live stuff started back going too. So I can start putting artists back on stage and things like that. I've learned so much over the years. I, I can do a show, take it back to old school promotion. 
people are not promoting shows and artists the way they should be these days. No, they're not. Oh, they're not. Yeah. All right. Any other questions for Russell? We're good. All right. Well, I'd like to thank you, Russell, for coming out today and uh, participating. Thank you. Um, and maybe you'd like to join us on Monday. Mark Litton is going to be here on Monday. And uh, same channel, WebEx channel for the students, same channel here. Uh, and Mark is more of a road tour logistics accountant kind of guy. Okay. So he's worked with everybody from Bruce Springsteen to Limp Biscuit to uh, Shania Twain to Def Leppard and those kind of things. But so he'll be discussing with us about a little bit about that end of the field on Monday on this channel. So at 530. So uh, if you'd like to join us for that, Russell, that'd be great. Students, I'm, I'm going to send you an email with the same information. But I would uh, like to say thanks a lot. You know, I've known you for many years now, and I'm glad to see things that are moving. And I'm proud to call you a former, former student of mine because you are uh, making things happen. And uh, you're no dummy, that's for sure. Yeah. So um, it's good to see, and I'm I'm glad that your your heart is still in it. You know, it's yeah. uh, it can be grueling, as you know. Yeah, I love it though. <laughs> I love it. Yes, you do. It's All something, right. it's well, something about though. It's something about when you're doing this, and I'm making I'm making this money myself, and my artists we're generating this. This is us doing this. It's something about that that people can't take away from you. You got it. That's for sure. The entrepreneurial spirit is is very strong. Yeah. Once you taste it. Yeah. Okay, y'all have a good one. All right. Thanks a lot. We'll all right. Uh, thank you all. We'll thank share you. Soon. Thank you, Russell. All right. Anytime. Thank you.